I'm Jerry Guy. I'm going to moderate today's session. I work in the uh, research section here at our Office of Materials, and I think we've got a really interesting and uh, good presentation about using wrap in chip seals and microsurfacing. Our, our presentation today is by Don Matthews. Don is the technical manager for Pavement Recycling Systems, Inc where he focuses on the development of recycled products in pavement preservation and rehabilitation. He provides technical support for all company projects. This includes pavement consulting, evaluation and value engineering services internally, as well as to a variety of public and private climate clients for the implementation of good pavement preservation and rehabilitation strategies that are incorporated into recycled and green technologies. Received his bachelor's degree in civil engineering from Cal Poly Pomona and his master's from Cal State Long Beach. He's a registered engineer in the states of California and Arizona. So please welcome Don Matthews. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> Today, as Bob says, we're going to go through um, kind of our experiences with wrap chip and wrap slurry. Uh, we've been using them. Um, wrap slurry we started back in 2003 and have projects that are still in existence today performing very well. And then wrap chip we started implementing a couple of years later. Uh, the reason why we started doing that is because, quite frankly, in California, virgin aggregates are getting harder and harder to obtain. Um, we also looked at it from just uh, uh, us being a large milling uh, contractor. We were looking at other sources for it. Uh, the wrap piles are starting to grow. So we started, uh, as I say, back in 2003, realizing we needed an alternative source. What we found is because of the neutral charge, it's not fresh aggregates, that the wrap works really well with, with most binders. So <clears throat> you may have seen parts of this presentation before. I uh, did it at the National, Center, uh, National Pavement Preservation um, Conference uh, a couple years back. Today only, we're, not, we're just going to talk about wrap chip seals, wrap slurry seals, and microsurfacing. And I'm going to use those interchangeably. Um, we typically, when we decide whether we're using a slurry seal, is, uh, is whether we need a lot of handwork involved, residential areas, uh, we have it's, it's, it's good weather. If not, then we, we go to a microsurfacing. But we use the same wrap aggregate either way. And then we'll, we'll briefly talk about cape seals and that we do do wrap chips and wrap cape seals. I am not going to talk about another application, uh, cold central plant recycling. It will be just focused on chips and slurry seals today. So the first thing to, to kind of understand on your wrap chip aggregates is you may have different type of aggregates within your pile. It could be that the single stone, and you will see those single stones they will have some of the, the binders still stuck to them. Then you'll see a combination of um, different conglomerations. And that's kind of the key um, part of this, why it works well. And in some cases, if you don't pay attention, it, it doesn't work so well. Um, and, and the whole purpose on that is, is your existing binder, is it going to soften and, 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 and how much? And if it softens a little bit, it actually makes your road really nice because you, you, you can use less binder to lay down on the, uh, on the roadway. And then when the traffic gets into it, it just kneads it in and gives it even better adhesion. We typically use two type of aggregates out here in California. We use what we call our medium 3 8 and a medium 5 16 And I'm, I'll leave these up on the screen for a little bit so that you can see um, just kind of the difference in the gradations. And it, it, it all is agency dependent, whether what they prefer, if they prefer a little coarser texture or a little finer texture. The one thing that we do is we always take the residual asphalt um, on, on the chip. And the reason for that is we want to make sure that we truly are using 100% wrap and not getting it mixed in with 
um, if you were if you're taking in other debris, concrete, that type of thing, or that you've gotten some of the underlying materials mixed in. So we want to make sure that we typically have at least three and a half percent residual asphalt um, based on dry aggregate on the wrap. That may that makes us really confident that it's a it's a wrap and that it is um, going to be able to have strong adhesion. The other things that we look at is we look at the percentage wear. Um, we want to make sure that there's a, a very strong, um, um, you know, LA Rattler on there. Uh, we do that before we even crush the wrap. We just everything uh, before we crash the wrap. I, I will apologize. I, I've given you the ASTM numbers, and I I kind of realized. Uh, late that I don't know the AS, uh, AST, uh, ASTM numbers or ASTO numbers for cleanness value and, and California durability. Uh, those are two other tests that we look. Uh, you, you'll note on the cleanliness value, we put report only, and that's one of the one of the things that um, one of the agent, agencies had the hardest time understanding that in when we use RAP. It's not like crushing virgin aggregate where you have to make sure all the fines or any clay, clay smears are, are, are washed off. You've got to wash the, wrap, uh, the rock. Um, on the cleanliness for the wrap, we, we really don't care because any of the crushing uh, dust is actually asphalt and it actually leads to a, a better embedment and a, a, a better adherence um, on the product. So, uh, but still, we uh, until we can get, convince everybody otherwise, we, we always just kind of run it and, and, and developing a database on it. And as I said, this is kind of the, the typical look. This is a 3 8 inch wrap chip, um, but you can see it. Some people go, oh, that's, that's dusty, but all the dust is, again, asphalt particles. So you get very, very good, strong bonding um, with, with the material. We don't wash it. What we do do is if the wrap chip is going to be used in a, um, for an emulsion uh, application, we will wet it down really well. So it is, we just find it, it, it flows better and um, adheres better by wetting it down, you know, on the pile right before we load the trucks. But we don't try to wash off anything. In fact, we don't want to wash off anything. Uh, the other th um, application that started coming into California is um, the hot rubber chip. And in that case, people would end up going to a hot plant and using um, chip that was coated with about uh, less, a little less than 1% asphalt on it so it would bind to the rubber. Well, we had LA County come in and say they wanted, it was so expensive to do, they wanted to try a wrap application. So we did a bunch of laboratory testing and then we decided to do a few pilot projects. And now we got to the point where they just will use it for the hot rubber. The one thing we have to be careful with that on, on when you use the hot rubber is that it has to be it's opposite of when you're in an emulsion. In an emulsion, you want to wet the chip so you get better adherence with hot. Um, asphalt rubber, you want to dry the chip out. We, we screen it again, fluff it up, and make sure it's dry so you don't have that water hitting that hot asphalt. But either way, we're finding that bonding is excellent on the, the wrapped chips. Uh, just give you a few kind of case histories. You can see some applications um, with the, the terminal blend hot rubber. This is, this is on the left is where it's a pre-coated chip with a um, a hot mix asphalt that they were paying expensive, very expensive, $95, $100 a ton for this material. On the, on the right, you can see where we did a hot rubber chip with a wrap. Uh, actually, further right, you can see where they put a wrap slurry seal in a cape, cape type application on it. Now, I'll give you a, a video that shows that even a little bit more in an urban area. Um, on a polymer modified chip seal, you can see you can use your typical same equipment. There's no new equipment that has to be done. There's nothing you got to modify. It's just a chip seal. And you can see here the wrap being spread over a typical spread, uh, the oil spread out with a, a, a standard chip sealer. 
Uh, this was actually, I, I just like to show this because this was our first RAP chip project. It was done back in, in 2006. And I, I'll be honest, we, we focused on RAP slurry because we had a RAP, we had a, a, a slurry company. Uh, we saw the advantages of it. But we had the remnants when we made the RAP slurry of all this other material. And we started talking about chip seal. But I was a little worried about the chip sealing chip seal um, softening and, um, and, you know, having the surface kind of bleed into a little together. Well, we talked to San Bernardino County back in 2006 and we did this first project and that's the, that's what everybody loves about the chip. It's not that coarse um, application that it, it feels. It has very good texture. It gives you all the skid resistance. But it gives you a look of more like an open graded asphalt as traffic starts getting um, getting on it. Um, this is about 10 years later. Uh, you can see it, it's still very high traffic. I was lucky lucky um, to get away from uh, or get it on a, a low traffic uh, day on a on a holiday because a lot of um, uh, uh, trucks go down here to the cement company on there. But you can see it's excellent. The other thing that's really unique on this is you can compare the chip to um, to the left, which was um, the center line is actually the left is Riverside County and the right is San Bernardino County, and so they just they actually did it purposely chip sealed right up to kind of the center line, so the so the, the Riverside County had to do an overlay ultimately where they just did the chip. So of course, when things start going well, everybody tries, tries, starts trying to um, um, change the process or improve the process or use it in other applications. So the county of Los Angeles started, they, they really like scrub seals. They like where the brooms scrub the oils in the crack. And they started putting it on roads, and you can see in this uh, picture up here, pretty highly fatigued roads. Um, they weren't able to pay for what really should be done on there, a cold recycle, and then a, an overlay or a, a deep mill and fill. So they put this, they started using uh, the rat scrub seal, chip seal, um, on, on higher fatigue rolls. And you can see six years later, although you can see the cracks coming back on both of the pictures, you can kind of see where they're coming back. It's actually, they're really pleased at how it's kept it sealed and act, um, glued together, and they haven't really done anything on that for an, um, for over six years. In fact, um, somebody, I didn't have a chance to get up there, went up there uh, just a, a couple of months ago and said, yeah, it's, it's still looking the same. So what are the differences between some of the wrap and conventional aggregate? The biggest is, uh, I'll just give you our shot rates. I, now, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, this is a research the alliance. Uh, I talked to Buzz, um, Buzz on um, Powell on, on some of this. There is research that needs to be done on this because everything we're looking at right now is it's been anecdotal. It's, 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 it's our particular area of, of California, and you're going to have different binders of the wrap. So I'm going to give you a suggestion. I know there's several agencies going to look at using this. We use typically a polymer modified uh, CRS 2P oil. And when we're doing 5 16 inch chip, we shoot at about 0.28 to 0.32 gallons per square yard. And when we go to 3 8 inch, we are about 0.32 to 0.36 gallons per square yard. But the one thing that we always consider, because we, we have a pretty low penetration on the existing asphalt, is we find if the as asphalt is softer, so the penetration is higher, that we start off with an even lower shot rate. The reason why is because you're going to get more diffusion. You don't, that, that asphalt on the chip is going to soften a little bit, and you don't want to um, I, I, you don't want it to actually, when they start blending together, have the potential for bleeding. The other thing is, is consider your traffic. 
Um, we just had a, a, a case where we had the San Bernardino County uses it in a lot of, you know, and, and I'm going to try not to use the term low traffic areas because in California, a low traffic highway is a 30,000 ADT, um, whereas in other areas, a low traffic highway may be 500 ADT. But we're using it in our mountain roads, uh, secondary roads, where you're probably in about 10 to 15,000 ADT on there, and um, with snow plows, and they were shooting it um, at a little higher rate than we kept trying to suggest, and and we weren't having any problem. Every once in a while on curves, you get a little bleeding, no, no removal of the chip, but you might get a little re, um, bleeding because of the, the high shearing forces. Well, they they used it so much everywhere that, that they put it into one, a very high, you know, a lot higher traffic area, which was typically like 30,000 ADT, and they didn't adjust the binder content down. So they're getting quite a bit of the softening and um, the shine on the surface. And, and, and so I want everybody to understand when you have a, when the traffic goes a lot higher, you're going to actually want to even lower your shot rate um, itself. It's not like normal chip where the traffic, the shear forces will pull it off. What it's doing more is it's actually needing and causing more diffusion of the two asphalts. And that's a little bit of um, contradictory to, to, to people who have long-term um, chip experience. Now, the other thing is we've, had, we've done a, a couple of projects and we found we just had too much, too rich oil between all four applications. So we, until we figure out what the reasons that why, we don't do double chips with both layers of wrap. We'll do, and it doesn't matter. You can do the first layer with wrap and the second layer with conventional chip, or you can go vice versa, the first layer with um, conventional chip and the second layer of wrap. But we just find when we get two layers of wrap that have a whole bunch of binder in it, and then those other double binders applying, that we, we find that it gets a little soft. So I know we're going to hold questions to the end, but now I'm going to transfer into um, trans um, transfer over into slurry and microsurfacing. And I will tell you for this presentation, we look at them um, interchangeably. So I apologize if it seems a little confusing with one word I say microsurface and one slurry seal, but we use the exact same wrap for both. It's just the actual binders and how much polymer is added and you know, the type of um, emulsifier. So again, when you look at the wrap, it, it's a uh, conglomeration, but because they're such smaller sizes, it's very few conglomerations. It's, it's a lot more of all, um, it, it's not like, uh, I shouldn't say it's a lot for, uh, fewer, but there's a lot more variability between getting pure stone versus um, pure uh, you know, essentially almost all wrap with very fine aggregate in the chip. Here, Your phone has been placed on hold. Please wait. Is everybody still there? Yeah, I think we're all still there. Okay. Um, so you get a very consistent grading in asphalt contents as you go forward. Typical wraps um, aggregate pile. Um, it, we put it wherever we're going to use it. Um, I'm going to tell you some of the challenges of it and how to uh, um, overcome those. So the one thing is, is when we do the wrap, crushing for the wrap, we're light on fines. Um, meaning that if you look at a conventional type 2 wrap or, uh, or microsurfacing gradation and you compare those, you're going to find on the bottom end the 200s were light. That's because that's the material that gets more bound up into the residual asphalt more than anything. But performance doesn't matter from that. We don't need the fines like we do in conventional microsurfacing or slurry to act as a filler. We don't need that because that material is all already coated and those fines are within the material. The, by far the biggest challenge is clumping. So when we make um, 
a, a whole bunch of wrap slurry, like I right now have 50,000 tons sitting in our stockpile, we'll, we'll run it through a screen again before we, we send it out. Because in the piles, as it gets heat, it'll start clumping together a little bit. The chip doesn't do that very much, but the wrap slurry does. So we've also get to the point where we ship it out relatively fresh, or um, we try not to stockpile it on, on sites where we're going to use it very long, uh, very, you know, just a few days ahead we bring it in. And our guys have also got to the point where they got loading, they, they've learned to, you know, smash it down a little bit, and, uh, and we've overcome that. No matter what, we've learned because there's a time for the new asphalt to react with the old asphalt that we just put a rubber tire on everything we do, slurry or microsurfacing. And what that does is causes a little kneading action and allows a better retention early until those have time to blend together. We also, no matter what we do, do a, a minimum of 3% latex modified in slurries too. And we find that gives a little adhesion until the both asphalts melt together. What's the really best part of this whole thing is because you use, because you're using essentially a pre-coated aggregate, you have a, lot, you have a lower application rate of the binder um, in the slurries and microsurfacing. So therefore, the additional cost of a roller and the, and, and the additional benefit of the latex modified, it actually is a little cheaper to use wrap in the whole process than it is to use conventional. So you get those added benefits by the reduction in the binder content. Here are our gradations. Un unlike the chip, we don't do an extracted chip gradation. We understand that it, those are just the conglomerations, but um, on the slurry, slurry, we do do both. Um, we check it unextracted, just the pure wrap as crushed, and then we check it as extracted. And, it, and I think part of that we do that is just to make sure everybody's, all the agencies are comfortable because when you look at the type two extracted aggregate, you find that it falls right in typical slurry gradations and microsurfacing gradations. Again, we look at the, the residual asphalt content. In this application, we want a minimum of 6.5%. Make sure you haven't gotten blended in some non-coated aggregate or um, other de deleterious materials. We run a sand equivalent. Um, we make sure that that sand equivalent uh, is at least 60, so it's a very good, high-quality material. And then we run on the material before crushing a LA Rattler to make sure it's a very um, strong um, abrasion resistance. Now, when you look at our wrap versus you know the International Slurry Seals Association's Type Two, you can see that our emulsion range that we're adding is typically 10 to 14 percent. So even at the low end, you're automatically two percent lower binder than you would. Um, a, a conventional non-coated um, non aggregate. And, but then when we look at our residual asphalt, what, what it's all bloodied together, we tend to be you know, right at the high end of it. Um, so you've got the benefit of both asphalts working together. Again, conventional equipment can be used. It doesn't matter. Uh, you don't need to modify anything. You can just go out and do it. Um, I, so, so a lot of people always ask me, well, because it's a, it, it's wrap, is it going to be a bla uh, blacker? And, and I like this, these two pictures because this is a, a neighborhood where we, we did essentially half with wrap and half slurry. An agency wasn't, you know, entirely willing to switch over yet. It was brand new. They weren't sure. And so we went back uh, a year later and, um, and, and looked at what the difference is, and then we actually – we went back two years later, and you see a slightly different, um, slightly um, more differentiation. But if you look on the right, which was the conventional aggregate, you look on the left, it's just a little blacker. It's still going to oxidize. It's still going to end up graying out a little bit. It's not a black rock. I, I want to stress everything uh, to everybody. It's not a black rock. It, it's just 
it, it's like an asphalt. Let's start, start oxidizing some. What I will tell you, though, when you actually look at these roads side by side in person, you go, the RAP slurry just looks a little better. It's not orders of magnitude better, but it just looks a little better than the conventional slurry. And that's why so many agencies around us have started using it. I will tell you, once an agency goes to a wrap slurry or, or, or wrap chip, they, they really don't go back. They, um, the only thing that makes the difference is if just the cost for shipping it to wrap is so much more than if they had a local um, uh, regular uh, aggregate source closer and the, and, and the cost changed just on the aggregate uh, shipping rates. But if it's, simul if it's equal cost, Everyone who's used wrap will end up staying with wrap. So how do you manage the wrap? And you can you can do it two ways. You can require wrap materials in conventional bids, and some agencies just do that. Say it shall be a wrap wrap slurry, and use the um, use the the uh, specifications that I've, I've shown you in this presentation, or you know specify a wrap ship. Or you can use your own wrap, and we have some agencies that are starting to do that. So you get a, a stockpile of wrap. This is how we produce it. If we're going to just sell it out to anybody, um, and, and we don't sell it just to our companies, we sell it. We make sure it's a free enterprise. So we sell com competitors every day who will use it, but we, we'll process this way. Um, so you can see our, our stockpiles of, of 5 16 inch chip in here, and we'll have a stockpile of 5 3 8 inch chip, and then a stockpile of the slurry. But we also like the idea of what we're calling urban quarries. Essentially, you have, and you know, it could be rural quarries, but essentially you have your own materials, and you mine the value of your own assets and be reused. And that was one a project we, we did at Caltrans. Caltrans off of one highway had a whole bunch of wrap process, uh, a whole bunch of wrap stockpiled. And we came in, set up a plant for them, and we segregated out into both wrap chip and wrap slurry to, simultaneously. Um, there's a couple, There's it's, it's just not one screen. There's some screens uh, in front of us. but. If you do it well and get the chip real clean, you, um, you can use that directly for the, for the chip. And then at the same time, you can make your wrap slurry. And so we essentially, you're, you're, you're making a wrap cape right there because you can use both. And that's ultimately what they did is they did a chip seal and then they put the, the a slurry right on top of it as a cape seal. So I have a video here. This is the LA County. They're, they're, they use this process almost extensively. Um, they've added a few other things. They 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 microsurface before. Uh, my, I'm sorry, micro mill, so they get a little smoother the roadways before they do this. But this is their double grow project. I like it because it's an urban application. It's pretty easy to do all of this in a very rural application, long, long roads. But I'll, I'll give you an application where they did it in an urban application and even they had they did a few repairs before their um, in the highly distressed areas oops sorry <laughs> there's a little music I don't know if you can hear it I forgot to turn up You can see in the areas that were pretty pretty well distressed, we came in and did some a few dig outs first, and we replaced those highly distressed areas with um, just conventional HMA. So 
these are isolated dig outs, the areas were of high fatigue, and then we came in and we micro mill. And a micro mill is a, is a standard coal, coal planer with a, about a quarter inch T spacing compared to a 516, so very fine tooth pattern. And the, the County of Los Angeles likes to do this because it essentially removes all the old existing surface treatments and gives a very, very smooth, um, smooth road to start with. So it, it removes a lot of the imperfections. Here it is a, um, a scrub seal. So we put in, we scrubbed in the oil and then we place wrap chip. And then we put a wrap slurry right on top of it. So you can see there's a lot of benefits when you use the wrap, and, and this final shot is just of the finished road um, about six months later. So that's pretty much the end of my presentation. Uh, to, to summarize, we really got in the business because the aggregates were um, twofold. Aggregates are just getting scarce for us out in California. We're, 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 we literally have a conveyor in from Mexico that goes over the border um, every day. We, we're shipping down sand from Canada. Uh, we can't open these new pits. You, you look at this photo, and this is actually just exists quite a, quite, um, uh, quite a few places all over the state. And then the other is we were looking at, because it's harder and harder to get rid of wrap, and we're a milling company, um, we were looking for other applications. So we started looking and saying, okay, well, yeah, it could be used in hot mix, but it's only typically, you know, 15, 25%, real good jobs, maybe a little bit more, but the very low averages. And we were looking at these and started um, using them and finding that in reality, it's actually working out better. It's a better product in, in, in most cases uh, if it's applied. So we ended up looking at and saying this is what, what was looking at as a problem is actually now a preferential treatment um, to be used. So with that, we look at always the solution is to use RAP. It, it really should be if it, if it makes economical sense to you. And people ask, well, where is economical sense? And in reality, it's, it, it's your trucking. How far do you have to truck it from where you're going to crush it and process it? Or if it's going to, uh, you know, just the, those economic um, uh, reasons, it's not the material reasons, it's the economic reasons. Hey, I got a highway where I got it, but, but it's 300 miles away. Well, maybe it's not cost effective to you when you have a, a, an aggregate source like this nearby. So with that, I'll leave my contact up on the screen, and um, Bob, I'm open for any questions. Do we have any questions here in the room? This, this is Jim. I have one question on the phone. Yep. Um, how much wrap do you have to go through? Um, how many tons, or what's the? Um, how many tons of wrap do you have to go through to get? Say a ton of, of chips. What's so the, it, it 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 kind of it, it depends on you know it always depends right but it, it depends on what you're you're milling. So like if you're milling up an open grade, obviously you're going to get a lot more chip. Uh, conventional dense graded material, we're typically about uh, for every ton of dense grade wrap, we're about forty to forty five percent chip. And um, and then uh, sixty to fifty five percent slurry. Thank you. 
Uh, question. This is Matthew from northern Minnesota, St. Louis County, to be spe specific. Um, question being, do we have any case studies, any any implementation of this up here in, in northern United States, you know, Minnesota in particular, anything like that? Nobody's aware of it. Yeah. I, I know they've done some in Ohio. Um, but I don't know of, uh, of, of any in Minnesota. Uh, real quickly, while I'm sitting here staring at my screen, I realize I have a typo in my email. It says D Matthews at pavementrecycling.com. It should say D Matthews at pavementrecycling.com. So if somebody wants to get a hold of me, I, I, I apologize. The right spelling's down below, but um, just it's a typo. Have you ever tried the micro milling chips and turn those right around? I mean, how close of a gradation does the micro mill give you to something you could actually use right away without processing? So I'm going to tell you right now um, on the micro milling, it depends on your depth and your T spacing. Um, uh, we use a quarter inch tooth spacing. Um, I know some people talk about using micro mills, and uh, but they really use a five sixteenths inch T spacing. And they just slow down and they try to convince you that it's a micro mill. What we find is when we do the micro milling, and we're only taking you know um, a half inch off because we're just trying to re restore the surface that that gradation on that, we get very little chip material. It, it actually makes uh, very close to our slurry um, um, requirement. Now, that's in dense grade applications. If you're micro milling off an open grade and you're just cutting off the open grade, I would imagine that you would get, um, it's, it's gonna pop off and it's gonna be closer to the chip gradation. I apologize, I can't give you a specific surface, um, you know, um, specific gradations because I don't know what mills you're using, what speed you're going, and what you're milling off. Um, I can just tell you we literally did, because um, we're coming out with a, a new process here shortly that, that's going to use the micro milling in an in, a in place recycling application. and. Um, we did hundreds of projects all over the state, and we found relatively consistent gradations. But they were um, they had um, about 10% over a 3 8 inch chip, and 90% passing a 3 8 and well into about 80% passing a number four, which we're looking at that more as a, a, a slurry type application or a microsurfacing application. Um, than in a um, in a chip application. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Pecamp, Wisconsin DOT. Do we have any uh, uh, I don't know documentation, case studies of the actual value added uh, of these processes as it pertains to say pavement life, life extension, uh, preservation costs, things that, that we could take forward and, and say, you know, look, if we, we use this, you know, here's the value added. I know this is probably pretty early on in the introduction of this process, but things like that would help. Yeah, I would refer you to L.A. County. Um, L.A. County has, has been doing it back for about 10 years. Um, th they've gone almost 100% to it. Uh, I, I will, the, the one thing I can almost make, I, I know it's me as a contractor and, and a supplier from a nanodotal uh, source, but um, I, it, it's, it's not any less than using conventional aggregate. Conventional aggregate, does, we have not seen that the wrap performs, oh, well, you know, you can get a, on the same road, a 10-year application with conventional aggregate, but only in eight on on wrap. Um, we, anybody who's doing it is looking at it at the same cycles 
with as they would their conventional aggregate. So, so do you have someone in LA County that you? Uh, yeah. If you want to send me an email after this, I will give you a um, a, a contact for Los Angeles County. Okay. Great. Thanks. Question on your scrub ceiling on urban streets. Uh -huh. How do you protect manholes and water valve boxes when you're brewing that oil down the street? Um, we'll, we'll typically tape them off, scrub over them. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What, what material do you tape them with? Is uh, I'll have to ask our crews on that one. I'm sorry, I don't okay. know what, what it is. They'll 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 tape them off, and they do it on on their conventional slurries too. They'll they'll go in and tape off their manholes and um and then uh, go over them, then just pull it later. Mostly okay, we, thanks. Mostly yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know if they're use, what what tape they're using and what products. I, I'm sorry. Okay, thanks. Said tar paper. <laughs> Dan from the North Dakota DOT. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, uh, our specifications for chip seals, uh, we have a 100% pass in the 3 8 and then 20 to 70 on the 4, and then 0 to 17 on the 8, uh, with a inch, about 1.5% on the 200, but could should we be gearing our wrap piles to that particular spec? I mean, would there be anything wrong with that? No, no. The only thing you may end up doing is, depending on how you crush it, uh, you may need to do, um, and your screening plant, so like if you're out in, in you have a one screen um, out in the middle of a, you know, a, a, a one area or something, and you, you don't want to hook up a two screen pass system, you just want to use one, you may have to run your chip over one more time as what we call a cleaning pass to, to get some of the finers off finer material off. Okay. And then also um, that cape seal you were doing there, that, that when you were fractionating the wrap, you had the fine portion in another pile. Uh, uh -huh. You're using that for the wrap slurry. And does that need a, like a mixed design then, like the current uh, slurry seals do and stuff? Yeah. Um, we kind of have a – we have every, out here everybody has a standard one. But, yeah, we, we normally you, – you do a, a, a mixed design. As far as the other, as far as uh, the the regular chip seal, though, you don't have a, a mixed design program or anything. You just no, uh, and and that's the one thing that um, it's not a mixed design. Um, but the one thing I, I really caution people is because I get uh, it's not like you want to use like lower binder contents with those two the three conditions is a when you use wrap. You're going to automatically use um, lower binder contents because with conventional aggregates, you have to have a certain amount of it to essentially coat the aggregate so you get that wicking up there. Well, you don't need that with wrap. You automatically have natural affinity between the wrap, um, the, the binder on the wrap, and, and the new binder. And, and then the second thing is, is I really caution, and this is where I, I can't give you specific numbers, um, but... I do, and we're starting to generate it, and I encourage all the research, research associations out there to really start looking at it. But when you get a softer at wrap, so, you know, our penetrations in California are typically 16 or around that or, or even a little less, so it's a pretty hard wrap. When we find that somebody's using it on a softer material, uh, you know, in a penetration of the existing wrap up in the 30s or something, you, you want to start off with a little lower shot rate and then um, let, because it'll, uh, it'll soften and diffuse faster. Same thing with traffic. You don't have a big risk if you have very little traffic out there and you, you kind of overshoot the, the oil a little bit. But if you've got a lot of traffic, just like a conventional, it'll start bleeding. Well, now if you have the potential to soften the wrap, you, which is, is a strong benefit if you shoot it right, um, but becomes a detriment if you, you overdo it because you, you have that potential of bleeding. So the one thing I – the conventional – with conventional aggregate, everybody's always afraid of 
You don't get enough binder that you're ultimately, you're going to get those shear forces from the tire and it'll rattle off and come off. With wrap, the traffic actually makes it work better and embeds it more in the future. Um, it actually causes it to stick better. The traffic will actually force that wrap down in there, cause you know the pressure for diffusion better, and so it'll give you a much better adherence. Um, and essentially, it's better to be, which is cost effective, under undershot. Uh, and let traffic have it, then overshot. Thank you. Okay, I think we're done with questions in the room. Last call for questions online.